understanding linear models. And we're going to use a specific example talking about global, global temperatures and atmospheric CO2 concentration. So this chart shows the atmospheric CO2 concentration in ppm, that's parts per million, and the corresponding average global temperature and CO2 concentration for a particular year from 1970 to 2021. Looking at this, which variable is dependent upon which, according to the graph? Now, one way that you can always think about this is the x-axis or the horizontal axis is always going to be the independent and the y-axis is going to be, the, I shouldn't say always, generally that is the case. So when we're thinking of this, the temperature, the average global temperature is dependent upon the CO2 concentration. Right, we, here we're talking about global warming, my friends. As the CO2 concentration rises, the temperature rises. Right? That's what we're looking at. So the temperature is dependent upon CO2 concentration. Let's interpret the slope of this model. Well, we can find the slope from our equation. So 0 0.0099. Slope, when we interpret, we're going to interpret it as a fraction. And remember that slope is the change in y's over the change in x's. So what does the y-axis talk about? Well, that's the average global temperature in degrees Celsius. And the, the, the x-axis in the denominator is CO2 concentration in parts per million. So knowing that, and if you are a visual person, I highly recommend writing that out just like that. And then you can put it into a sentence. So you can say the average global temperature increased, we know it increased because our slope is positive, increased 0 0.0099 degrees Celsius for every one increase in CO2 concentration in parts per million. So you use the numbers of your slope to describe whatever the X and the Y is. And you just put it into a sentence. Increase because they're both positive. Let's use the linear model, that's the y equals 0.0099x plus 10.754, to estimate the average temperature expected when the CO2 is 400 parts per million. The parts per million is x, so that tells me that x is 400. So if I'm using y equals 0.0099x plus 10.754, I substitute that 400 in for x. So 0 0.0099 times 400 plus 10.754. Order of operation tells me to multiply first. So 0 0.0099 times 400 gives me 3.96. And then we're going to add 10.754, uh, which gives me... 14.714 degrees Celsius. Now, looking, here's 400 right here on the end. So if I go up, this point right here should be about 14.7. So if I come over, yep, it's right between 14.6 and 14.8, which, my friends, is 14.7. Love it when it works out like that, you know. But that's just pointing right there. Check out your answer. If you're on a graph, you can look at it and make sure that it makes sense. If it was way off, I would know I made a mistake somewhere. So how strong is the correlation between the average global temperature and the atmospheric concentration of CO2? Well, if we're talking about correlation, we need to talk about our friend R. We have R squared equals 0 0.08885. That's given here. And to find R we need to unsquare it, which means we're going to square root both sides. So that gives me R equals 0.9426. You'd use your calculator to find the square root of 0.8885, which is 0.9426. This is rounded, of course. And because R is greater than 0.9, we would say this is a very strong, it's going up, so it's a positive correlation, this very strong correlation. We say there's definitely a relationship between the concentration of CO2 in parts per million and the average global temperature. 
Can we use this linear model to estimate the CO2 concentration when the temperature is 14? So now we're talking about the scope. Remember the scope of the model is generally talked about in terms of the X values. So is 14 degrees Celsius within the scope of X values? Well, look at this. Here's 14 degrees Celsius. If I look over, yeah, I have points in there. So this answer is yes, because 14 degrees Celsius is in the scope. Because really anything from really 13.6 to probably 14.9, I would say that we can work with because it's pretty close within here. Anything above 14.9 or below 13.6, I would say that is what is outside the scope because it's going to be too far off in one of the directions of our X um, axis. And our last question, can it be concluded from the graph that CO2 causes global warming? Hard stop, the answer is no, because correlation does not imply causation. Yes, there is a relationship. We have shown there is a relationship, but a relationship does not mean that one causes the other. There are so many other factors to consider that we can say, yes, there's a relationship, and that is all we can say. Correlation does not imply causation.